In the year and a half Randy Schneider had been hang gliding, his friend Steel Persons almost always went along to help him launch. On November 24th, 1989, they went to Makapu'u Point, the most challenging launch site in the Hawaiian Islands. It had become Randy's favorite spot, though he had only flown there ten times before. Uh, I think I'm going to have to help you with that. Randy's my best friend, and he's um, been the best friend I've ever had. It's beyond explanation. He, he's my family. Oh, who tied that? <laughs> you did. You did. There'd be a part of me that'd be missing if Randy wasn't around. You know, you need, you need to pay me oh. more for this. We reached up to the top, and this cliff is, it's literally um, about an 1,100-foot drop. You can see for miles. Dan Utinsky, a hang gliding instructor and pilot, was also getting ready to launch. Makapu requires enhanced flying skills because the landing field is so small and has obstructions in it. The first time I'd flown there, I'd been flying for 13 years, and it took a little bit to convince myself I was going to fly off of that box. <laughs> it's quite intimidating. There's not much that a bird can do that we can't do. Uh, we're a little rough on landing in trees, but basically we can do everything else a bird can do. Okay, when I hang down, take a look at all the lines, make sure there's nothing twisting, okay? Okay. We were always both kind of a thrill seeker types. Almost got it. Okay, I'm lifting the nose up. I pull the hang glider up and then he hangs from it to make sure that all his cables are uh, in the proper positions. Yeah, everything's fine. Feels good. Okay, ready to go? Yeah. So that when he launches, he's in a, he's in a good situation. You all set? Everything uh, got a good grip? Any time. Okay, clear! I love to go up there and, and watch Randy. I'll meet you at the bottom! It is a very dangerous sport, and it's not something that, personally, I'd feel comfortable with. I pay attention to people who are in the air who I know have a low amount of air time. One of the pilots had only 10 flights off of Makapu, and uh, he was flying a rainbow-colored glider. His flight techniques looked solid. He looked, looked like a good pilot. He was doing quite well. The landing zone, it's right um, right next to the highway. At this point, I'm, it does get kind of boring because you're basically sitting and waiting on somebody. I was watching the rainbow colored glider preparing to come into land. And everything looked normal, everything looked calm. When I saw the glider cross the highway, I became concerned. It looked like he was attempting to maintain as much altitude as possible in order to clear the fence. Randy! A lot of me did not want to go over there because I was scared that I was just going to I was going to find him dead. Even from altitude, it looked like the impact was serious. It would be like running into something at 35 mile an hour. He hit it hard. Randy, Randy. He was alive, but he was just gasping for hang air. On, on. I told him, I'll be right back. I got to get some help. I got to get some help. My friend's really been hurt. Call 911. The pilot was still in the glider, still harnessed up. And he hit the guardrail at high speed with his body, and he actually caught one of the sharp cornered edges at least once. He looked real bad. I was surprised he was still alive. Just glider off of him. What, what, can I help? Yeah, let me get it. After we unhooked uh, Randy from the glider, he seemed to be able to breathe a little easier. And it was at that point that I noticed that I noticed the blood. Lift it up. Let's get 
it was coming from under the harness, but I didn't want to remove the harness because I was really afraid he was going to bleed to death right there on the spot. I felt completely helpless. There was nothing I could do. How are you feeling with the glider okay. off? Okay. You all right? I haven't seen a lot of trauma in Vietnam. Uh, he was as bad as anybody I've seen. Most of them didn't make it, and I really didn't think he'd make it. Helps on the way, buddy. Helps on the way. Okay, how's your legs feel now? Try not to move her hands. The first rescue units arrived within three minutes, including Waimanalo Ambulance paramedic Joe Rispicio. When I took the harness off, I wasn't expected to be petrified. The injury was massive. I did not know exactly how much penetration that post went into his chest, whether it penetrated his sternum, his heart, or his lungs. My major concern was to get him to the hospital. 32-year-old Randy Schneider was taken to Castle Medical Center, where he was examined by emergency physician Sharon Laurie. We were really behind the eight ball on this patient. His blood pressure was dropping quickly. At that time, I was very concerned that he was going to die. He cares about you. You have the best times in your life together. And um, if Randy had died, I would have lost the only true friend I've ever had. Over the next few days, Randy had two surgeries to repair the massive chest wound and rebuild his right shoulder. Laura, I'd like you to meet Randy. Come Laura Randy. Painter was a nurse at Castle Medical Center. I worked evenings and the CCU nurses told me about a hang gliding pilot that was their patient. And the other nurses I work with assigned him to me, and they made me take care of him. So how are you feeling? That was all their plan. Everybody else was conspiring, and everybody kind of knew he was going to ask me out. And at the end of the week, he did. <laughs> it all worked out. We seemed to get along great. I felt like I could completely be myself. And nine months after my crash, we got married. Randy is an extremely lucky person. He, he had a horrible accident. Um, he came as close to death as anybody I've seen. And uh, he got away with a gorgeous woman for a wife. Who can knock that? That's Kalani and Ani I remember Randy saying how he didn't mind being in the hospital, and he also mentioned that he liked the hospital food, too. And I thought, oh, if he likes the hospital food, then maybe they missed a head injury on him. <laughs> to watch the sunset? I joke around with friends that, uh, when they ask how we met, and I'll, I'll tell them the story, and I'll say, I fell for her, or we met by accident. When you come close to killing yourself, I think you really start appreciating life a lot more. Even though I, I went through a, a very traumatic experience and, and a lot of injuries and near death, I think back when I'm with Laura and I would do it all over again if I knew the outcome. <laughs> 